the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max are incredible media mobile capturing devices, but they have one big problem, and that big problem has to do with their camera system. So what is that problem, and how can something like this provide a potential solution for it? Let's get into it. Now, these are the three issues that you can find with the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max camera. The first one is that the telephoto and wide angle lens don't share the same sensor as the primary 24 millimeter lens. Instead of having that nice 48 megapixel sensor, they have a 12 megapixel sensor, which especially on the telephoto, if you're wanting to zoom up, you're probably gonna want more detail and information captured. And I've also found that the smaller sensor doesn't do as well in poor lighting conditions like at night. Second issue is that I find the native camera app doesn't do a great job in dialing in Apple Log and getting the exposure right. And typically I found provides you with pretty noisy log footage unless you're in like super ideal lighting conditions. And the final big issue, and I mean big issue is in like big file size, is that Apple Log takes up a ton of space. Like for a minute of 4K 60 ProRes Log, you're taking up approximately like 12 gigabytes of footage, which is gonna fill up your hard drives really, really fast. Now for the first issue of the telephoto and wide angle lenses not being on the bigger megapixel sensor, Sandmark provides a solution by offering telephoto and wide angle lenses or even fisheye that attach to your primary lens so it accesses the 48 megapixel sensor while also giving you that extra reach or a little bit of a wider angle viewpoint. Now the second problem has a two-part solution. The first part involves installing the Blackmagic Cam app, which will allow you to really dial in your log video settings so that you can expose properly. The problem with that is you are going to need to cut light to your phone because it's really easy to overexpose log footage. This is where Sandmark comes in because they have created a really great line of ND filters, which will do just that. Cut the light coming into your sensor so that you don't have overexposed log footage and you can really dial in your camera settings. Now for the third issue, which is the really, really large log file sizes. As I mentioned before, about a minute of 4K 60 ProRes log ends up being about 12 gigabytes of footage, and that's more than you wanna handle and put on hard drives. Thankfully, solution is it once again provided by the Blackmagic Cam app, which will allow you to change codecs which you're recording in. So when you're in the native camera app, you can only record in ProRes log. But in the Blackmagic Cam app, it gives you options to record in a ton of different codecs, and I personally would recommend that you record in H.265. You'll receive the tiniest, tiniest drop in quality while massively reducing your file sizes. As an example, that 12 gigabyte file size for a minute of footage that I mentioned before, in H.265, it's only about 400 megabytes. And what else is great about it is that with that 4K60 ProRes log footage, you're gonna need an attached storage device to your phone to be able to even shoot on it. But when you're shooting H.265 4K60, it can write directly to your phone storage without any issues. And to me, that saves on convenience, it saves on space, and honestly, you're not gonna notice the difference. So now that we've talked about how Sandmark provides a great solution for the issues the iPhone has, I think all that's left to do now is get into testing because at the end of the day, the big question is, does it actually make a difference? We know ND filters cut light. We know that the Blackmagic Cam app is gonna give you more options to film log in. But the bigger question for me, I think, is whether these external lenses are going to increase the quality of your photos and whether you actually need to access the primary camera for wide angle or telephoto capabilities to get the quality that you want, or if it's not gonna be something that's noticeable and you should probably save your money. So to do that, we're gonna take some photos and videos around the mall. We're gonna pixel people a little bit. And then later on this week, I'm gonna take you out to Banff National Park where we can do it all over again, but in some dreamy mountain backdrop. Let's get started.
So we talked about how the Sandmark kind of filled some of the gaps with the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. We also showed some test footage and kind of how you can edit it to kind of look pretty great overall. But while we were out, we also did some testing and that's what I want to get into now is the pixel peeping part of it. Does this external lens actually improve the photo quality, the video quality of your iPhone or is it something that's not necessarily needed? So let's let's check that out real quick. So comparison, we are doing the wide angle. So this would be the 16 millimeter wide angle Sandmark lens versus the 13 millimeter wide on the iPhone. So let's do a side by side comparison. I think that'll be most, most helpful. And let's see what we got. Okay, so zooming in. Oh, wow. Okay, this is, to me, this is really, really noticeable. The iPhone, you are losing so much quality, like the, the 12 megapixel camera, wide angle camera. This just becomes doughy, and I don't I don't know how if there's a better way to describe you know the image quality, but I think I think doughy really wraps it up. Is when you're in that not ideal lighting conditions, a lot of these details just get very very muddy, doughy. You can't make them out; they're not sharp. Whereas like the Sandmark, yeah, that's that's keeping sharpness pretty good. I'm I'm pretty impressed with that. And zooming up. Honestly, the mountain looks really great in both of them. I'm really happy with that. The clouds, pretty comparable. This is again, like ideal lighting conditions, right? Like it's a clear day. Um, trees, I think there might be a little more detail potentially in Sandmark, but then the trees behind on the iPhone, I feel like are sharper. So I'm not sure. I think that's, I might say it goes for the iPhone. It definitely has, it's softer. I feel like it's it's noisier with the iPhone, but it's kind of a softer, muddier. I don't know. I was moving up a gondola at this point, so maybe that was like a motion thing. I don't know. But in general, I'd say those two are really comparable. And I see some writing here. Let's zoom up on that. Okay, so you can't make that at all out with the iPhone, and with the Sandmark, clearly says level one. To me, that's pretty obvious. I think I think the Sandmark outperforms the iPhone uh, wide angle in low light conditions. If the lighting's not great, it's definitely outperforming it. So, okay, so obviously this last section, we're comparing the lower quality cameras to a better quality camera with a lens attached. I think while walking around Calgary, I realized I wanted to test what does it look like to compare the primary iPhone lens of that 24 millimeter length with a Sandmark lens attached to that same primary lens and how do those things compare? Uh, because that I think brings into question, okay, is it just the megapixels that are making the improvement or is it actually the glass that you're attaching that is making it better? Um, and then as a control group, I wanted to shoot it with my Sony 24 millimeter GM lens on the Sony a7 IV. Let's get into it. Uh, let's zoom up on that. Oh, wow, okay. The sand mark on the detail of these, uh, on this Wonderland sculpture, to me, it looks so much better. It's got a nice softness to it, which I think the iPhone image, even though I'm not shooting on like HDR at all, I think it's kind of coming out a little HDR. Oh, I should also mention that all these images are shot on RAW. Look at the building, uh, iPhone's okay. Sandmark, very, very clean. I think it looks more flattering. I think to me, the, the lens is clearly doing something, maybe giving it a softer effect and it feels less digital. So let's compare the Sony to the Sandmark. So zooming up. Okay, like I think the Sony looks nicer and it's sharper, I'd say. But honestly, it's really, really comparable. Yeah, I think the Sony has a much nicer, softer look. Like it's definitely a more premium look. But if you didn't, if I didn't know that one of these was shot on an iPhone with an external lens, and I didn't, you know, and I was just told, oh yeah, these are both from a, a mirrorless camera, I, I think I would honestly believe that. Whereas I think if you showed me the image shot on the phone without an external lens, uh, I'd be like, no, that's that's a phone image. Even though it's good, like it's good. It's just, I think it's a softness for me. There's a nice roll off, there's a nice softness, a nice sharpness. I feel like I've been very positive about the Sandmarks. I feel like, you know, we talked about the issues with the Sony, how potentially the Sandmark kind of products fix those issues, and all those things are very true. And obviously we just looked at the images as well, and the quality, you're not gonna argue the quality. The quality is really, really fantastic. I'm, I'm actually impressed. I didn't think that there would be this much of a difference, but I think it's important that I don't just sugarcoat this whole thing there are some issues i will say that the biggest issue that i have is more of an issue with how the iphone interacts with the lenses as opposed to the lens itself but it's still irritating and then 
I would say the other issues I have are with some of the accessories that they sent me. So let's talk about that real quick. On the native camera app, it will automatically switch lenses. If it perceives that you're, you know, close to something you need macro mode, it'll switch to that lens. There's no manual way to turn this off. And that's the issue that I'm finding. So as you can see right here, so as you're walking, all of a sudden, the phone, I guess, will sense that, hey, there's something that we need macro photography for, and it'll switch to your wide angle macro lens. And then the result of that, as you can see, is that there is a black lens covering three quarters of your screen. Now, there are two quick fixes for this. You can go into your iPhone camera settings. Uh, you can go to record video, scroll all the way down, and then you're going to want to turn on lock camera. What that's gonna do is while you're recording video, it's not gonna switch lenses on you, which is gonna mean that while you're recording, you're not gonna get a big black lens in the middle of your frame. The problem with that is you can't do that before you start recording. Thankfully, once again, Blackmagic Cam App came to the rescue. If you are using the Blackmagic Cam App, you set your lens in the app. There is no automatic switching. That does not happen within the app. It's all about giving the user control so if you set it as your 24 millimeters or whatever it is, it's gonna stay there and it's not gonna be switching. So you're not gonna get this all of a sudden, you know, baked black lens in the middle of your screen. Um, outside of that, I will say for video, I don't know if I like it as much as just utilizing my regular camera lenses. I find sometimes for video, I think it struggles with maybe following quite as much or that autofocus doesn't work quite as well because there is an extension. Other people might not be experiencing this. I'd love to hear in the comments if you have any experience with this. That's what I found. I also found that I oftentimes like to use like a DJI Osmo, like a phone gimbal. And I find when you attach one of these lenses to the front of your phone, it throws off the balance a lot because these lenses are actually quite heavy. Like there, it's a solid chunk of glass and metal. I did that the other day and some of the footage that I used from the kind of footage reel, video reel, was filmed on a foam gimbal, but I had to use kind of like a warp stabilizer type thing uh, to steady the footage in post because I just didn't have as much control in it. When I looked at the footage, it was quite shaky without that. So if I was doing video, I think I'd stick to just the regular built-in native cameras on here. But for photo, as we proved, it does do better. The big issue that I had um, with one of their products was actually with this case. And it's an issue that I expressed to their team, the team that sent me this to test out, said, hey, this is a really big issue. I think, I think personally, I think you should look into it because I could see it causing a lot of damage potentially to a person's iPhone. And that issue is that they didn't make this kind of little camera section up at the front, they didn't make this deep enough. If you've looked at the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, uh, the cameras come out quite a bit. Like there's a significant lip on there of where the cameras stick out. And so they need to adjust for that and they did. But the problem is they didn't adjust for it enough because this mount also is where you screw in your your lens to. So if you screw in your you know Sandmark lens into the Sandmark genuine leather case all the way, when you try putting on your phone and clipping it to your phone, then your phone actually can't go to the case all the way. So what you end up having to do is kind of put in your phone, screw it in like halfway, but that's as far as it'll go. If you were to force it, I think my danger is someone might not be paying attention or they might just think there's an issue with this and they're just not screwing hard enough. They force it and screw it in further. I could see that damaging your primary iPhone lens. Second issue I had, I found that not all USB-C cords fit in the bottom USB-C. For instance, I tried to plug in the USB-C that they included with the Samsung T7 SSD, um, which enables that fast transfer speed, and it would not fit in this. I tried a couple different cords and came in the same issue, so I actually ended up taking a knife and like cutting out some of the some of the leather there to make it wider and then it worked but and then the, the final issue that I have is probably maybe more of a me thing but I don't this isn't my primary case you know I, I use this I use this green one because I, I like the color green it's thin it's light this one's a hardy case but I find because of that you have to really snap it in and then after I'm done shooting a lot of times I'm like okay well take off the case but because it's such a stiff case, you really, you kind of have to bend the case to get it off. And even though I haven't used this case that much, I find that bending that I've had to do has caused that to crack actually quite quickly. It didn't really hold up. Overall, I, I don't think I'd recommend buying this one. They, I know they make other types. Hopefully that's not the same issue with those, but that was my experience with this.
All right guys, so that's the video. Obviously, I was impressed with the lenses for photography. As I said, I don't think I'd use them for video, but overall, I think I think they provide a valuable kind of product in the market. So let me know in the comments, do you think you'll use these on your iPhone or is it not really your thing? But thanks Sandmark for sending me these. They were really great to play with. And like I said, I think they add some value in some of iPhone's deficits. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'm Kaelin Charles and I will see you next time.